Hi there, my name is Brian Wainaina and I am learning data science. So in this series of videos, I'm going to use it as a diary of what I know of what I'm learning about using Python for data science. So today I'm going to start um, at the very beginning with uh, launching the tools using the tools for uh, Python for data science and the tool I'm going to be using I'm going to be showcasing is IPython I'm going to be showcasing this tool called IPython and I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook for that okay so now the first thing we need to do is to launch Jupyter Notebook now, I'm on a Windows machine but um, the process is quite similar on uh, Linux and Macintosh computers though in Linux I can open um, a Jupyter Notebook from the terminal directly so I'm going to go to start menu and then I'm going to go to Anaconda here and then I'm going to go to Jupyter Notebook and launch it so it's going to spew up a command prompt and then in a short while it's going to open the instance of Jupyter Notebook um, on the browser. Okay, so we're just going to give it some time. Um, yeah, so I started learning uh, um, data science in Python because I felt this it's something I'm really interested in. It's something I would like to do. I remember when I was doing work on Excel, I used to um, really love um, trying to find insights from data. Okay, so now it's opening and um, yeah, so it, it's as open. So it's Jupyter. So what I need to do now is I need to go here to new and then I'm going to choose a Python 3 notebook. Okay, I'm going to choose a Python 3 notebook. Okay, then after it's launched, now you're going to start writing our commands. So this step, I'm just showing that I know how to launch the tools. In the coming videos, I'll start the videos from when the tools are already launched so that we don't, uh, we don't waste a lot of time waiting for them to, to load up. Okay. Now it has loaded up. Now the first thing I want to I want to notice is uh, the interface here. So right here we have the title of the document. Here I can change this title to something else. I can say um, blog one like that. I can call it blog one, and then I can just say rename. And you can see here the name has changed to vlog one okay so now here we have the menu bar just like there are the other programs if i click on file i can save save as rename i can do edit i can i can cut cells i can copy cells now this one what you see here uh, this one is a cell okay so now i can cut cells i can copy cells i can paste cells above okay can delete cells, I can split cells and all these other operations, okay? Now, the same thing happens with all the others. If you click on them, you can see the, um, you can see what, uh, what they offer. These are quick access tools here. So if you see, this one looks like a, fla a floppy disk and this one has for a long time been used as the sign as a symbol for save and if you look here you can see it's also save and save we can see these savers here okay now this one is for insert a cell above this one is for cutting a cell which we found here in edit you see cut cell um and this one is i think for uh, copy selected cells and then this one is paste then this one is run but you see now the thing is um 
after a while you realize that hunting for these icons yeah hunting for them is quite a hassle but if you learn the keyboard shortcuts it makes life a lot easier and i'm going to show you this to you right now okay now this one is the in okay this one is the in and this is where you put your commands or your functions or anything else that you want uh, the interpreter to do so for example um let's just write a normal python function okay so let let's write print let's write print hello okay now i can click on run here but the shortcut i uh, the an easy shortcut that is now second second nature to me is hitting control and enter which in a mark i think will be command and return okay now if i con control press enter you see it brings out hello okay okay now i've used this cell yes i can hit enter and print something else here okay let me print my name print brian okay now i can run those two statements by control and enter and i can see hello and brian but what if i want to leave this cell as is and go to the next to the next one now a shortcut that i use is alt plus enter i think that would be option and enter or i don't that's i don't know whether um, i have never used a mac before but in windows i can just say alt plus enter when i hit alt enter it opens a new input field okay and now here i can come and write another um i can write something else another command okay so let's say we want to import um the math library okay so the python math library so i can just say import math okay uh then i can come down here and say um math dot course okay i want to calculate the course of one okay now if I press Control and Enter. You see, it imports the math library. Transfers it imports the math library, and then it calculates the cosine of the number one. Okay. Now, what I want you to notice is here it's saying out four. Okay. It's saying input four. Then here it's saying output four. Right. Okay. So I want you to notice that here we have um, two inputs and here we have two inputs so i think that's why it's saying input for input and here the number of inputs is four and also the outputs are four another thing i want you to notice to know is that you can write functions um you can define your own functions just like you would in a normal uh python uh, program so for example let's, let's uh, write a function that calculates the square of a number okay so i'm going to start with def and then i'm going to call it square and then this is going to take in a number okay and then i say i colon and then inside here we are going to write a dog string a dog string yeah? so this we're going to say Calculates the square of num. So that now, if anybody wants to look at what this function does, they can just see that it calculates. I'm going to demonstrate this in a short while. Okay. Now I'm just going to say return. Okay. Num raised to the power of two. Okay. Now I'm now going to call this function okay now i've run it by control enter now i'm going to hit alt enter to create a new cell so just for convenience so that i can run it here okay now i want to say uh, square square i want to find the square of 
three. I happen to know that is twenty-seven. Okay. Oh no. No, that was cube. I'm thinking about cube. So it's square. Square of three is nine. It's not twenty-seven. Twenty-seven is the cube of three. Okay, sorry for that. Now so far you see we are up to output number eight. Okay. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because these are not just normal decorators. This in and out, they're not just normal decorators. You can use them to access the input or output at a certain position. Okay. So for example, let's say I want to you see this output five. Okay, if I want to print out all the outputs, okay. I'm just going to say print. Okay, I'm going to say print and then I'm going to say out. Just like that. I'm just using this this name the way it is. And if I hit control enter, you see, I get a dictionary with the um, key. The key, the key is the this key like this number four. It's referring to where is that? Um, zero point five four, I think. Um, okay, so like this number eight. It's saying nine. Then number nine. It's saying nine. Why would it? I'm not sure it does that, but <clears throat> okay. So as you can see now, I can access. I'm going to do more research on this, okay? But as you can see here, I can access now this number four. I can access it like this, okay? I can come here now and say. In square brackets that I want the output with the key where the key is for okay and if I press enter you see I get that number that we saw there okay let me do that again so we have 0 0.54 let me create another cell so that we can test it out okay so I'm going to say print out give it number four so if I control and you see this value is exactly is the exact replica of this value over here okay now I can also because now this is a dictionary I can also I can also do um, operations I will do a dictionary in normal Python okay so I can say I can print out can even say out um, dot keys okay now this should return all the keys in this dictionary okay if I control enter you see it's saying dictionary keys four five eight nine and if you look here four five eight and nine okay now in the same way we have just done with the um, output we can do the input now. I want you to notice that the output is a dictionary. Now let's look at the input. So if I say in okay and control enter, it gives me as a list all the inputs I've added since I opened this this notebook. Okay. And as you can see, these are all the commands that we have written. Okay. Now, if I create another cell, I can access this in just the same way I would access a list in normal Python. That is by using the index number. For example, if I want the third item, okay, this is the zero, uh, item with number zero index one two three okay so if i say give me the input at the third position you see it's saying print hello okay and it's this one okay now same way i can just find the length of all the inputs okay i'm just trying to show you that these ins and outs they have a meaning it's not just they're here for decoration 
so I can just say length uh, I can use this in build function from by in Python and find the length of all the inputs and you see it's saying 23 okay so that's that now another shortcut to keep in mind is that there's a short and there's a shortcut to getting the previous commands okay so the previous three commands uh ipython gives us a great shortcut to get to access them for example um let's say print but now here instead of saying um output for we are going to use an underscore just one underscore okay and you see it's saying 24 why because 24 is the immediate last result we got here so this one instead of writing um print out 23 you can just print underscore it and this is updated if i if i do another calculation or print something else or do something else that becomes the latest okay so it's always updating itself what if i want the second last one if i want the second last one now it's even more convenient i can just write two underscores there one two as you can see it's longer than the first one and if i run this i get 23 okay why 23 um let's see let's see let's see there has to be a 23 somewhere not sure where but this one is the second last this one should be the second last now the third last is print then we have three underscores okay now these three underscores means the third output from the current one from the latest and you see it's print hello and print brand okay okay so another thing to remember is that print functions they do not count in the output print functions and functions that end in a, in a semicolon they are not added to the output dictionary they are not added there so that's why you see it's taking us back 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 to the very top okay it's taking us back to the very very top whereby we printed hello and we printed brian okay so anything which appears with the out 23 and out 24 that's what is stored in the dictionary okay and to prove that what i'm saying is correct if i create another cell and i do a calculation like five plus five okay if i run this normally with control enter it brings an output says output 30 and gives me the answer 10. let me create another cell and repeat the same so five plus five this time adding a semicolon at the end okay if i hit control enter you see it it does the calculation but it does not give me the answer and it also does not add to the dictionary like it did in this case okay okay so one last thing i'd like to show you <coughs> is that <coughs> say if you want to get help with functions okay now in normal python we would do this we would say help and then we want to learn how the length function works Okay, so we, we wrap the len function inside inside help okay and then it says returns the number of items in a container okay however um ipython gives us a very convenient way of getting the same information so rather than wrapping all that inside the help function i can just write the function len and add a question mark okay then when i do when i control enter it opens a pop-up down here where it tells me the same information it turns the number of items in a container okay so as you can see we got the same information all we had to do was write the function and a question mark okay few more keystrokes which is always great <coughs> okay 
now another thing okay we can't even get um, help for the functions that we have defined ourselves like up here we wrote a function called square that calculates the square of a number okay now let's say we want to get uh, help on that so I'm just going to say square and a question mark if I run that you see calculates the square of num where did it get where did you get this information where did it get this calculates the square of num if you come here at the where we defined the square function you see this dot string this text inside this triple quotes this is what it got okay now this is very important because when you're defining your own functions you should write at least such a statement so that people can know when they're having difficulty using your function they can know um what your function does and how to use it okay okay so that's that's that another thing i'd like to show you before ending this uh video is to how to how to get the source code of of a function or anything else okay? of a function so let's say i want to know um how my, my my square function was written okay so in this i'm going to write square but instead of a single question mark i'm going to place two question marks okay if i run that you see here now it gives me the whole function from the def to the return okay so this is great if you want to further investigate how your function was created or how how the function works or something like that and you can see it even gives me the dog string okay okay great so i think so far that's it and one last thing before i, I go is that <coughs> There are some functions that when you use this double question mark syntax does not give you the source code, okay? Let me show you an example. So let's say we want to look at the source code run behind the length function, okay? So it's length double question mark. If I run that, you see here that in this pop-up, it gives me, just tells me the doc string, the signature, and the type. It's a built-in function. So the, the reason why it's not giving us the source code is not because it's a built-in function. The reason is that this function was implemented in another language, maybe C, maybe Java. Uh, so when we write such a syntax, it cannot get to, to the source code that was used to define this function. But for no more, um python functions like the ones we have defined here and any other if any other ones that we can define we can get the source code any function written in python we can get a source code okay okay great so thank you so much for watching in the next vlog diary i'm going to uh, talk about magic functions and how they help us um how they make our lives so much easier okay so i really hope you enjoyed yourself you enjoyed this video and until next time um take care thank you for watching